Well, happy Monday to you. It is a new week, a new week to serve the Lord. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Anna Fry. This is Hope Today. And, uh, you know, Sunday, there were just a few things going on. We're going to be talking about that in just a minute. But we're so glad you joined us here on this Monday. Anna, tell us what's coming up. Yeah, well, it's so good to start the week off with you. We're glad that you're with us on Hope Today. We have a fantastic guest coming up in just a few minutes, but also want to mention that today's uh, planned guest who we promoted in the newsletter, unfortunately, was not able to join us. So uh, instead, we wanted to show you a conversation that we had with evangelist Joanna Co. Herndon. She was visiting the area, and so we talked to her a little about a little about what God put on her heart concerning revival, miracles, redigging the wells where dirt maybe has gotten over it, and God wants to sweep off that dirt and rebuild that revival, that spark, that power, and do miracles. Tom. Oh, I know that that's going to be a great conversation because I love that whole idea of kind of redigging those ancient wells and yes. and seeing God move again. Well, it is Monday, and that means meaningful Monday. Well, there was this little tiny uh, sporting contest yesterday known as the Super Bowl. Anna's going to give us her play-by-play -play breakdown in just a minute. But uh, no, the Kansas City Chiefs won yesterday. I hope you watched it. But quarterback Patrick Mahomes gave God the glory after winning. What's it? It's his third Super Bowl, I think, saying that the Lord challenged his team as it faced adversity all season. The Chiefs won 25-22. And Mahomes won his third MVP award at just 28 years old. And he went on to say this, My Christian faith plays a role in everything I do. I mean, I always ask God to lead me in the right direction and let me be who I am for His name. Chiefs owner Clark Hunt also gave glory to God by saying, I want to thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity. And we want to thank the Christian Post for this uh, report. But Anna, you know, a lot of times people give uh, people trouble, athletes say, oh, well, doesn't God care about the 49ers? Doesn't God care about the other team? Or why does he favor you? But it's more about that person's, um, you know, heart relationship with God. God is right here for us. It's not just a Sunday thing. God, we walk in our relationship with God. And I think it's important to remember that's why people are giving God the glory. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a beautiful thing no matter what role a person is in that they are giving God the glory. And, you know, as far as like Super Bowl <laughs> talk goes, all right, I, I know there's a whole bunch of you out there who were like me and you did not watch the Super Bowl. Oh, I don't and believe there, it. I can't believe I that. I mean, Come the on. news did say that on average people eat 8,000 calories at a Super Bowl party. So well, I think I just snuck right under that. Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> that blooming <laughs> onion. <laughs> but let me tell you about what I was doing yesterday that was in my opinion, my own Super Bowl. So I have this group of wonderful Bible study ladies that come into my home every week and we study God's word together. And it is an absolute miracle how God has built community, how he has built friendship and connection. And yesterday, they pulled off the most beautiful surprise bridal shower for me. I was completely blown away. And so just from the details to the food displays, to the love and the gifts, but the absolute most beautiful thing to me were the women who were there and the love that was poured out. I got to experience God's miracle of friendship, of community and love, and truly all the goodness that flows out of that yeah. gathering. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. What's that guy doing there though? What's, I know. Oh, what's that guy, that's... what's the guy doing? What's the guy doing at the bridal shower? Uh, yeah, you a picture of my man that's Dennis two weeks away from wow. wedding day so pretty soon I will be Anna Schmidt on the yes. show yeah such, that's great Anna. so much goodness very exciting very exciting very uh, wonderful things we've got a lot of things going on this morning including we're going to play this little game we call stump the host We have not seen these questions, so we want you to join in and see if you can answer them. Anna and I will do our best. So here's the first one. 
How many books of the Bible are named after women? All right, there's Ruth and Esther. Esther. And Esther. I think that's two. Uh, yeah, I'll We're say gonna go two. With two. All right. All right. Yay. Ruth and Esther, great stories. I hope you've read them. You should get go read them today if you haven't. They're short mm -hmm. books. <laughs> All right. Question number two. What did Jesus say you must do before taking this speck out of someone's eye? Take Punch him in the eye. No. Punch him in the eye. <laughs> I don't think that was it. <laughs> Come take, on, we know. Yeah, take the log out of your take own eye. Take the log eye. or the plank or beam or whatever translation out of your own eye. Boy, is that something that, I mean, uh, one thing I love about this is Jesus was using humor. People say, well, we don't see any humor. I mean, the whole idea of a, you know, a two by four sticking out of your eye, you know, that, that was a humorous saying that, that he used there. So here's the last one. Who was the first high priest of Israel? Uh, Aaron, right? Would, would, uh, under Moses, I, would, I think it would. Right, it would have been. Uh, Aaron. Have, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. We'll Aaron. go with Aaron. All right. Let's go. Take that, Patrick Mahomes. I know. <laughs> we are on fire. We, can, we give all the glory to God. That's right. I'd like to thank the Lord for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, listen, we, we are here having fun. We are uh, rejoicing in the Lord, but we do know that there was a serious situation yesterday at Joel Osteen's church, Lakewood Church in Houston. We are going to uh, have our interview, have our time, our conversation. When we come back from that, we're going to uh, pray about that situation, horrible situation. We want to pray about the people involved and just for the, to bring God's love to that whole situation there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so don't go anywhere. We have a packed program today. We got to take a quick break though, but we'll be right back. Jesus' two greatest commandments are love God and love others. Learning how to love better is a lifelong journey. This month, with your best gift to Cornerstone Television, we'd like to send you Love Like That, Five Relationship Secrets from Jesus by Dr. Les Parrott. Discover how to truly love those in your life with this revolutionary guide. Blending the latest research in psychology and sociology with biblical insights, Parrott shares five practices, being mindful, approachable, gracious, vulnerable, and empathetic to help you forge meaningful, fulfilling connections with others. Love Like That will revolutionize every relationship in your life. Ask for your copy of Love Like That, Five Relationship Secrets from Jesus by Dr. Les Parrott when you give this month to support Christian television through Cornerstone Network. Give online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope happens here. Well, I have the privilege to be here today with Joanna Co. Herndon. She is from Dallas, Texas, but is visiting the Pennsylvania area with a message from the Lord that he has for the church. And so, Joanna, we're so thankful to have you with us today. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me. It's exciting to be here. Absolutely. So this is your first time with Cornerstone family. It is. Tell us a little bit about who you are and your background. Well, I am Joanna Coe Herndon. My father was Jack Coe. Back in the 40s and 50s, he had the largest tent in the world, held 22,000 people with another 10 to 20,000 standing outside. Blind eyes open, the lame walk, the deaf hear. People came off of hospital beds. They brought them by ambulances, by buses, and they came by the thousands. So I grew up in the supernatural. Wow. So tell us, what was it like to be in that kind of a household where faith was so alive and active? Well, it was awesome. And I still believe in it today because he says, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did 2,000 years ago, he's still doing today. And that's why we go out and minister to try to stir people back up to say, he still does it today, church. Yeah. He didn't stop doing what he did with Jack Coe, uh, with William Branham, with Smith Wigglesworth. He's still doing it today. It's getting church to have that faith again to receive the supernatural. Amen. So you and your husband, you were pastors, ministers, and now you're full-time evangelists traveling around. So the, the 
home that you grew up in, how has that impacted your life as an adult in this ministry that you're doing now? Well, because I did see the miracles, even though I was a little girl when my dad passed away. I was five. He passed away at an early age, but I still remember in the big tent revivals, and I would tell people if I sat with them, you wake me up when the healing line happens yeah. because I wanted to watch the people get healed. It was just so awesome to see them to go from a mangled, twisted, or even a very sick, dying position and running all over that tent because I'm sure the fire of the Holy Spirit hit them and they knew they were healed and they just ran everywhere. And of course, as a little girl, it's like, yeah, let's run. Let's, you know, let's play. And Absolutely. so we even, I mean, it didn't stop even when we'd go to tent meetings. We did it at home as children. Mm. We prayed for each other, preached. And it's just something that became a part of life. Right. It's not, you know, because Christ is alive in us. So I saw and I said, if he does it for them, he'll do it for me. And if he was using my father, he's going to use me. But it isn't just me. He'll use all of you. He told us, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead. Freely you receive, freely give. So really, that's our job. Right. Amen. That yeah. is the truth. Amen. So there is a message that God's been putting on your heart about redigging ancient wells. Tell us a bit about that. Well, when I begin to read in, in Genesis 26, where it talked about Isaac redug the wells of his father, mm -hmm. and I thought, what is this all about? And how that the Philistines put dirt on it and didn't want them to have that water. And I believe that's what's happened to the church today is the devil's putting dirt on that water of revivals from, from the past. And so I believe it's to come scoop off the lies, come scoop off that dirt so that we can taste what was and the new wells because Isaac didn't sit around and fight with people to say, no, that's my daddy's water, that's my daddy's well. He just said, I'm not gonna fight with you. I'll just go dig my own well. And so that's what I do. I don't try to fight with religion because religion wants to fight. I just want the move of God. I wanna see people healed. I wanna see blind eyes open, the lame walk, the deaf hear. I want people to realize that Christ is alive in us. That when we receive the Holy Spirit, this is life. And when we received him, it wasn't just our tongues, hikamosha, honda, honda, honda. Mm -hmm. No, it was that we have power and authority. Luke 9 and 1 says, I give you power and authority. So God says, if I do the possible, he'll do the impossible. Mm -hmm. That power and authority is an important message for the church. And you talk about this dirt that has got, come over the wells. And so in a very practical sense, how does somebody begin to sweep away that dirt so that they can drink deeply from the well? Well, I believe a lot of it is through the word and through the Holy Spirit. I, I, I believe that people have forsaken going to church as much. A lot of that happened in COVID. And I believe that we need to be ministered to. God intended for us to connect. Okay. And so the main thing, I try to use it, give you an example. My husband likes to grill outside. Mm -hmm. And so he gets the coals, he, you know, and then he gets that lighter fluid and puts on top. And those coals are all stacked on top of each other. And then he says, step back and gets the match and, you know, explodes. Well, God intends for us to connect, to be piled together with each other so he can pour his anointing over us so that when the fire of the Holy Spirit hits us, we explode. But what happened in 2020, our coals got separated. I noticed when my husband wanted the fire to go out, he would separate all those coals and the fire would go out. Well, that's really what the enemy did. He wanted us to lose faith and hope. So he began to put dirt, because that's another way to put out a fire. Throw dirt on top of a campfire. Throw dirt on top of, you know, if you're in the middle of a fire, throw the dirt on it. And I believe that's what the enemy has done. Plus, I found out my husband can't cook a steak with one coal. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what a powerful illustration, truly, of how we are living in a time where there's so much isolation and that people aren't coming back together the way that they used to. And 
how when we come together, we sharpen each other, we encourage each other, we inspire each other's faith and how God truly does work through the body of Christ when we unite, when we come together in that authentic, vulnerable, deep relationship with each other and with the Lord. So in the little bit of time that we have left, can you pray for that one out there who longs for the healing and the power of God in their lives to be able to have him be alive in them and truly live in his presence? Oh, be happy to because he came to give us life and life more abundantly. In John 10, 10, he said, the devil's out to steal, kill and destroy. So what you're suffering with is what the enemy wants to do. He's a bully. And nobody likes a bully. In fact, if we knew somebody was bullying our kids, what would we do? We would get dressed. We would say, I'm going with you. Let's see what the bully's going to do today. Jesus says, I never leave you nor forsake you, but lo, I'm with you always. So we just come against that foul demon right now, that bully, and you take your hands off of God's people. We come against sickness, disease, cancer, arthritis, sugar, diabetes, autoimmune disease, all these different things you're suffering with. Jesus already paid for it on Calvary. By his stripes you are, as Isaiah was looking ahead said are, but Peter looking back said were. You're already healed. Jesus has your receipt of your sickness, disease, pain, depression, oppression, busted, disgusted, all these things you're going through. He has your receipt in his hand and that receipt is paid in full. And everything has a name, but those names have to bow to the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, loose and let them go. Be healed by the power and authority of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Ooh, amen. I love that. I mean, truly, Jesus sees it as already done. He holds the final victory. Joanna, thank you so much for your heart, for sharing your story and being with us. Well, thank you for letting me be here. Hope to see y'all again. God bless you. Are you tired of just getting bills in your mailbox? Find inspiration instead by subscribing to the Cornerstone Television's Hope Today newsletter. Each month, we'll deliver good news about what God is doing in our region and world through CTVN's ministry. We'll keep you in the know about our latest special programming, and our full program guide will keep you connected to all your favorites. You'll also find a new Dashing Dish recipe every month. As you read our Hope Today newsletter, stay encouraged knowing your generosity and giving to CTVN is making a difference and building God's kingdom. We can't do it without you. Sign up today to receive your inspirational free Hope Today newsletter every month in your mailbox. Go to our website at ctvn.org news or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for being a part of our Cornerstone Television family. Hope happens here. Well, we want to take a moment now to talk about something we uh, hope that we never have to talk about. And uh, unfortunately, all too often this does uh, come before us. And it's a shooting uh, that happened this time in a church, Joel Osteen's church, uh, Lakewood Church. Uh, you may see uh, his program on Cornerstone here at times. Uh, again, a woman walked into the uh, two o'clock service, a Spanish service, and uh, began shouting and shooting. And a couple of off-duty police officers uh, were able to uh, take her down. In the crossfire, a 57-year-old uh, a man got shot in the leg, and a uh, little five-year-old also got shot. And uh, he is doing, uh, well, he's, doing, he's in critical condition. So we need to pray about this. And I'm, it, it grieves me so much, Anna, that this kind of thing, that we even have to report this and talk about this, it is an unfortunate uh, epidemic in our society that we, you know, that, you know, that we have to see in a place of worship, right. someone bring a gun in and start shooting. Right. And sometimes I think this can bring up questions of where is God in all of this right. and why do bad things happen yes. to good people? And it's important to remember that 
we live in a, a sin-soaked world, a fallen world where sin is, it, it dominates in so many ways. The darkness, as you know, is fierce. And yet God in the midst of it all, that darkness will never ultimately be able to overcome the light of God. And there is no pain, no tragedy that God will waste whenever we come to him humble ourselves before Almighty God, cry out for His presence and for His help in time of trouble. That's right. So why don't you join with us right now as we're going to pray. I'm, I'm just going to pray into this situation and believe that God is going to bring something for His glory and our good out of this. So let's, let's pray for those people down there in Houston. Father, we just want to bring to you the situation and the people involved at Lakewood Church, Lord. Uh, Father, we, uh, we just ask, uh, Lord, that you would uh, rush into that situation uh, by your spirit, Lord. Uh, Father, I believe you are not in this uh, uh, the shooting at all, but you are in the response to the shooting, Father. And I pray, Lord God, uh, for a miracle. I pray for a miracle for that little one, that the child would uh, get up and recover fully. I pray, Lord, for the, the man that was shot, that he would recover fully. I thank you for the uh, people who responded quickly, the off-duty police officers, uh, to uh, take down the shooter, Lord. We don't know what was in her heart and mind, Lord. I, I pray uh, you have mercy on her soul, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that you would uh, just be uh, working in that church and in that church family and in the family of everyone affected. And Lord God, I pray, Father, that you will bring about the truth of God, the glory of God, and that that, that uh, uh, horrible situation will be brought to light uh, and to your glory. And uh, Lord, that you would uh, work a miracle in these situations. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Amen. continue to pray for that situation down there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we want to continue to talk about the miracles because in every situation, you know, we, we're talking about the suffering that is happening with the people affected by the shooting. And no doubt we all face things where there is suffering, this long suffering, where there is a walking through to get to where God wants to take us on the other side to that promised land that he has for us here on earth. And Tom, it's interesting talking about signs, wonders, miracles, the big acts of God where we see his hand move in a mighty way. I want to hear your, what your experiences are, your background with big moves of God. And then I kind of want to bring the other side of the moves that maybe might not seem so big, but ultimately are a miracle. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, we have a scripture for you. It's uh, Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. And it says this, And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out well, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. I slipped into my King James Version yes, there. Yes, you did. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, the, the thing about this is uh, God has always brought, when, he's a, uh, when he brings a visitation upon his people, there's always like signs of wonders that seem to accompany that. We just heard uh, uh, the, about the Jack Coe revivals and, and the great uh, miracles that took place there. And, you know, Anna, it's amazing to me the consistency that we see as we, as we look historically on when revivals happen and great turnings, the great awakenings and the great revivals, uh, the, the Azusa Street outpouring and things. There seems to be a supernatural response. It's not always healing. Sometimes it's just uh, there's always when a revival happens, there's always a getting right with God part of it. It's not just about, oh, I'm going to get healed. I'm going to go on and live my life however. No, God's showing up to say, I am the Lord of this situation. And, let's, and he wants us to uh, just get our lives because we have times where we've, we slip, we drift. Each of us does. And we have to get our, our focus back on God. But God wants to visit us with all manner of good things. Most of all, his relationship with us closeness to God. What a powerful thing that is. I hope you've experienced more than Sunday morning, more than even your Bible time and your prayer time, a closeness, a walking with God, 
God's desire of that for each of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was, when I was thinking about signs, wonders, and miracles, I was thinking about my own experiences with that and how uh, when my life fell out from under me uh, six years ago and how I was doing all the things that I was taught to do as a Christian growing up in the church with, you know, praying, uh, battling through prayer, being in the word, being obedient. And I was asking God for a mighty move, for a healing, for deliverance, for like an instant uh, revival within my home. And yet I did not see him work the way that I thought that he would work. And so it brought me into this place of a crisis of faith where I, I felt like almost disappointed um, that God wasn't working through the way I thought and wondering, is he who he really says he is? Are his promises still yes and amen for me? And then I read somewhere from a Bible teacher that oftentimes the miracle of God wants to be shown to us as we walk through that dark storm. Through long suffering, how will we connect ourselves to God? Because what God wants to do in our hearts through that long suffering is truly the miracle in our lives as we come out the other side. So when we're just looking for other people to change or for God to fix the person that would just make everything better, God is like, no, your heart is what I want to refine, what I want to mature. I'm gonna test your faith so that you shine like gold. So you are that bride ready for me, pure and lovely. So today, when you are going through that long suffering, yes, seek God for his miracles, for mighty moves of God to heal you and restore you. But don't only seek his hand and what he can do for you. Seek his presence. It says in God's word in the Psalms that in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence, in his presence is fullness fullness of joy. So today, humble yourself before the King of Kings, Almighty God, who is a miracle working God. Let him fill you with his supernatural peace, with his supernatural joy, and his supernatural love for you. Thanks for being with us today on Hope Today. Have a good one.